Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P. This is the refresh series of Approximox that I was planning to do for quite a while. To be honest, I just never had a time to actually sit down and start recording it. My first plan was to use one of the doc one of the Raspberry Pi NAS kits from 52Pi. This was kindly provided by one of my subscribers by the name of Peter. So thank you very much for sending me this. I was using this as my Raspberry Pi Docker server and I decided to start doing a Docker uh, refresh series but then uh, that's what basically he sent me a second one just to do this series but then uh, basically Raspberry Pi is really hard to uh, to find online to purchase for a decent price or if you will find one like even the websites that you they usually sell Raspberry Pis they're all out of stock and if you will find the Raspberry Pi to buy you're gonna have to pay a really stupid amount of money for it so I was thinking how I want to record something about the home server thing that I can set up using Samsung Dex and I realized you a lot of you inside the on my channel in the comment section and in Samsung Dex subreddit group you mentioning that you switching Samsung Dex you're switching your PC with Samsung Dex or you basically stopping using your laptop and starting to use Samsung Dex in Samsung Dex instead so I thought okay great I'm gonna just use old 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 laptop and I'll show you how to set a Proxmox server on an old laptop and instead of throwing the laptop away you can use that as your home server and this is the reason basically that's I recording this video just to show you that you don't need a super end computer to have a server running at home that's all you can have it's just an ordinary laptop in front of me is the Acer uh, i7 laptop with 12 gigs of RAM one thing to straight away to let you know Proxmox loves RAMs. The more RAM you have, the better will run. Proxmox itself will use one gig of RAM. So whatever is left after you deduct one gigabyte, that's how much RAM you will be able to use for your VMs. As this laptop is has 12 gigs of RAM minus one, I have 11 RAM gigabytes of RAM spare. So it's plenty for me to play around and obviously record these videos for you. So one thing uh, I upgraded to this laptop uh, is I swapped the mechanical laptop drive with SSD just to make it a bit more faster a RAM that's how it came with 12 gigs of RAM and I took the battery out because I don't want this laptop to run 24 7 while the battery is in so it's always going to be plugged in into the mains and right now I'm going to turn it on and start record start setting up the Proxmox one thing to let you know the fan uh, the laptop's fan is about to die so it's gonna make weird noises here in the uh, you can might hear in the background that making weird noises with installation uh, while I'm installing this so as you can see right now it's booting into the Proxmo setup I have already USB plugged in and I set up in the BIOS to start a boot from USB drive. To get yourself a Proxmox ISO, you just go to proxmox.com website and download the Proxmox PVE a seven point, I think 7.2.1 at the moment the version is. So I just went in there, downloaded the ISO, uh, plugged my USB key to my phone using OTG adapter and then using Edge Droid app, just flashed an ISO to this USB key. So you don't even need a PC to get your USB key prepared. So I'm being greeted with the user license. I'm just going to click agree. And here we go at the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see there is uh, my value tech SSD that I'm using for this video. I'm going to click next on here because I'm already plugged into my Ethernet by uh, Ethernet port uh, to my home network. It detects that I'm in United Kingdom and time zone and everything else is guest pre filled correctly. Password I'm going to enter something really simple. And then uh, email address you can use the if you're planning to pay for Proxmox support, you need to use a legit email address. I'm just going to use speak to Mr. P at gmail.com. Just why not? But in Let's say if I'm never planning to actually pay for their support, I can put a at a.com. It doesn't matter. The name of the Proxmox uh, node uh, by default is going to try to give you a name PVE. Uh, I will change that to say DEX. I'm just going to call it DEX box. Yeah, let's know. Let's call it DEX. And I can see IP address is 75. That's the IP address I will have to use. I, I will need to use to connect to the GUI so I'm just gonna select a restart after install is finished and right now it's installing it so once that is done I'll be back and I'll show you what else you need to do inside the web GUI to set up to for Proxmox to work properly on the laptop because it is a, there is one setting you need to do 
inside the Proxmox that you don't need to do on the PC towers. But what if you're using the Proxmox on the laptop, that setting you need to change it to allow your laptop lid to be closed and the OS still functioning. But basically, laptop will not go into sleep. So while all once once all the installation is done, I'll be back and I'll carry on showing you what else you need to do. So installation has been done and laptop is restarted. So I moved the laptop just behind me. So it's there running Proxmox and it's on the logging screen. So there is a um, couple of things right now we need to do. First of all, um, if you paid attention during the installation process, they gave you um, Proxmox installation, gave you a P address. In my case, it's ending with 75. So to access Proxmox GUI, you need to type HTTPS colon slash slash and then a local IP address ending with whatever number the Proxmox installation told you, minus 75, and then colon 8006 is port number. So this gives you uh, a warning that you are trying to access something uh, via SSL or with the SSL certificate, uh, but there is no SSL certificate. That's what gives you um, this error that says, oh, it's not secure. That's fine. Click advance and I click proceed. And it's going to give me a logging, uh, logging page. So username is going to be root and a password is going to be a password I set up during installation process and log in. So here we are. I'm logged into this Proxmox uh, instant that is running on that laptop. One quick thing to let you know, I'm installing, I'm installing, I'm using Samsung DeX on PC. It's just much easier for me to use, record and everything like for the record this series for you guys. So a couple of things we need to do, first of all, is we need to make sure that our system is up to date. If you click on a data center, sorry, if you click on a DEX or whatever name you gave to your node, yeah, or by default was PVE, you were able to change to whatever you want. I changed mine to say DEX and now under here, I click on updates and click refresh. And this right now will go and pull all the updates for the free tier of Proxmox. It might give you error one or two errors just because is there is no valid authentication to their tier business tier repository. That's why it says like uh, unauthorized access because your IP address is not being linked to your account. You're not paying anything for this to use the Proxmox. So it's right now it will provide me with a list of stuff that I need to update. And it's a bunch of them here. So right now I'm just going to click update or upgrade. This opens a new window and says, do you accept to install extra 850 kilobytes? I'm going to type Y. If a capital Y, it means its default will be yes. If it's capital N, it's going to be no. I'm just like to type Y and press enter. Even if the yes is option by default, you just say press yes, press enter without any, any, any entering Y or N. Or N. And I hope you know what I mean. So I will we'll leave this running and I'll be back when this is done. So inside the terminal message shows up saying your system is up, up, up to date. I can close this tab. And right now, if I will press refresh, it will show me, well, it should show a blank list. That means that all the stuff has been updated. Let's close that. And let's have a look if it's all been done. There's an error showing here in the log file. This is basically the error shows up that there is no um, valid certificate to the paid version. So next thing, what we need to do after we've done an update on the system, we need to sort this local and local LVM thing. By default, Proxmox will take your main drive where you installed the OS and split that into a two chunks. One is going to be used for OS and one is going to be used for all like stuff like uh, ISO files and uh, backups, virtual machines, containers, etc. We don't want that. We don't want to have our 240 gigs hard drive split in two. So if I'll go, for example, to local, it says it's only 62.3 gigabytes in size. And local LVM is 162. I want basically all that to be one single drive. So to do that, I need to go into data center under storage. I will select local dash LVM and I will remove that. That has been removed. Now we'll go back to DEX and under shell. I need to run a command. Well, actually it's three commands, but I combined that three, three commands combined into one command. So inside my Google Keep, I have this all written. Yeah, so I'm going to just copy that. Uh, that's control C that right click and paste. And what this command will do, it will delete that storage that we just removed from data center will resize the current uh, working partition to 100% and do all the mapping. So now if I'm going to go at the end of that and press enter, it will do all these three commands in one go. So as you can see, it's actually already did. If I go to local Dex. Right now I have 242.79 gigabyte storage. So my local, my SSD that I added into this drive right now, all of it belongs to Proxmox. Well, it was 
two parts was belonging to Proxima, but right now all of it is one single drive. Next thing, I want to make sure that this drive is used for everything what I need. So I need to click on the data center under storage. I will select local and click edit. And I will make sure that I have disk images, containers, and snippets set up. So it means this drive can be used to store disk images. That means like a virtual drives, ISO files, containers. By the way, disk image means it's going to store VMs as well. So VMs, ISO files, container templates, VZ dump is your backups. Containers, that's where the containers will run. And snippets, I think that is like a snapshot kind of thing. Anyway, all of them is selected and I'll click OK. And it gives me a list here. If I expand that a bit, it tells me exactly what content can be uploaded to this. So we have a backups done. We have the drive sorted. Another thing what you would will there will be no need for you to do if you're setting this up on a computer. But on a laptop, what if I'm going to shut the lid? The laptop will go sleeping. So we need to make sure that the Proxmox will still function even if the lid is down. So to do that, I'll click on a DEX under shell. I will write a command which is nano. Actually, you know what? Let's do a different way. Let's go into the Turmux SSH and we will log in into, uh, into the via Turmux 192, 168, 178. If I type correctly, 75. Uh, okay. Apparently, I already tried to co connect to that. So I'm just going to remove the known sources and I will log in this way. So here we are. We are basically inside the same thing. What's here? We are inside Termux, but it's much better, bigger font. It's much easier for you to see what's going on. So what we need to change when we, we want Proxmox and OS still function, even if a lid is down. Basically, we need to tell the system to ignore that the lid is down or up. Just always function. To do that, you need to type nano slash etc slash systemd and then look for a file called loggingd.conf. Inside here, we scroll down a bit, which will say handle lid switch. We will delete the hashtag at the start. And instead of suspend, we're going to type ignore. And we're going to control O to save it, enter to confirm, control X to close. And now when that is done, we will just reboot the system just by writing the command reboot, press enter and wait for system to, to boot up. And while that is doing, what I like to do is ping that same IP address and see when this goes down and when this goes up. So Proxmox is back. As you can see, it started to show that it's connecting. It's fine, then went unreachable. That was the restart process. And then it's back up and it's all functioning again. So right now, let's say if I ping, ping, um, no, no, not the ping, connect to the server by the using command SSH root with my IP address and entering the password. I am inside, inside the Proxmox, inside a Proxmox system. So I can connect via SSH, which is great. And if I go to the ter to the web GUI, it shows that everything is working. If I click on that and click on a node, which in my case is DEX, and under summary, I can see that everything is working. CPU is being used. RAM is be oh sorry, CPU is being used here. RAM is being used. So I turned the function to ignore the lid being closed. So right now, if I'll close that. Technically, I should still be able to use uh, Proxmox with no problems at all because I just told the system to ignore when the lid is down. As you can see, I can successfully refresh the GUI. So laptop lid is down, screen is off, but I'm still using the, the Proxmox. So this is the first video uh, installing Proxmox on the laptop and doing update, sorting the hard drive and sorting the lid closure problem. Otherwise, if you not do this lid closure command, every time you shut the lid, the computer will obviously go to sleep. But now it doesn't, it doesn't because I just told the system to ignore that. So in the next video, we're going to start setting up a first template of the virtual machine. I will start creating, uh, creating virtual machines for our files, for our uh, DNS records for our Cloudflare tunneling uh, and etc 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 a lot of things coming up anyway thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one goodbye